couple minutes. Now we're going to talk about knowing instruction and we're going to begin to progress forward inside of the verses. But first, we have to thoroughly means, uh, know what it means to, um, to know, experience the reality of instruction. We need to be instructed. We don't have it all figured out. We don't have all the skills, talents, and resources necessary. We have to begin to yield to the process, begin to listen to the voice of the Spirit of God, begin to have a relationship with God that begins to equip us with the instruction and the, the tools that we need in order to be successful inside of this life. We don't have it all. And so we have to know and experience instruction. Instruction comes from these two words, discipline, and warning and discipline is uh, is something that um, that that is put upon you in order to gain a, a a pattern of conduct, right? And warning, of course, is um, being warned of something that is going to take place in the future. And we need all of these things to begin to happen inside of our lives. And so, what I'm going to go into um, right now is knowing God as Father but being open and knowing and being intimately acquainted with his correction with his ins instruction because these things are are what is going to cause cause us to grow and expand inside of our lives hebrews 12 5 says this and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as children my son Despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither faint when you are rebuked of him. And so first I want to talk about this word despised and, and really point out that I believe that's what is taking place in the Christian world today and inside of the lives of believers. It's this great uh, despising of the chastening of the Lord. So despising means this. It means to have little regard for it means to disesteem or to not place any value on. And what we're talking about the, is the instruction and the correction of the Lord. So I don't have any value to be corrected. I don't find any value in being instructed. And I don't have any value in the discipline that God brings me. And I find that this, this, uh, this mode of thinking is very predominant in, you know inside of believers you know we talk about the fatherhood of god and we seem to just focus on the loving attributes right but what we fail to understand is that his instruction comes from love everything about god is love our father is love god is love and so if we we're experiencing his instruction and his correction that is a part of his love and so if we despise that and say, you know what, I don't want anything to do with being corrected. I don't want anything to do with discipline. I can guarantee you, you're going to struggle because you're open to one part of God, and that is maybe his love and his mercy when you fail, but you're not open to the other part of God, and that is his correction and his discipline to give you course correction along this path of life. And so that is the role that a father plays. And, you know, it's hard for us to understand this because we may have had fathers, you know, in the flesh that, um, that really didn't know how to discipline. All they did was very uh, punish severely. Uh, I had a stepfather like that. I remember getting into food and snacks. And uh, one thing he would do was he would grab my hands and he would slap them. And then he, he would hold my hand there and then he would slap them repeatedly and it was the goal was for me to begin to freak out and to begin to uh, cry in a very uh, uh, powerful fashion and then he would begin to mock those cries and so you know I had a stepfather who was just you know had this mode of punishment punishment uh, torture and all of these different things um, and so it's hard for us to understand the love and discipline inside the nature of God. It is. And it was a challenge for me. But throughout this process, I've come to, to understand and grow inside of that. And that is, of course, becoming my, a father myself and beginning to grow inside of fatherhood and beginning to see God inside of that. So God takes on the role of the father. And the father comes in the form of uh, instruction and discipline. 
So we're going to go through this these different roles that God takes with us inside of fatherhood so we can uh, begin to grasp and thoroughly understand the character and nature of God. So the first one is tutorage. And that is a person charged with the instruction and the guidance of another. Basically a tutor. And so this is God's role in fatherhood to become our tutor. Okay? And that is to give us instruction and guidance. Now I want you to think about this for a moment. What does a tutor really do? You know, inside of the school setting, um, what they prepare you for is to pass the test. And we need to thoroughly understand that inside of life, uh, there is going to be a test. And there's going to be difficulties. This is a powerful reality. This scripture here, if we really let it sink in, we'll thoroughly understand, you know, life. But thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. Okay? He always causes us to triumph. You know what that means? That means we're constantly facing difficulties. <laughs> you can't come to the realm of triumphing, uh, uh, overcoming victoriously, if you're not faced with challenges. So the very scripture of saying, you know what, he also always causes us to have the victory means that we are always going through difficulty and challenges and that we are always facing um, some sort of adversity and test inside of our lives. And so understanding this, that he is there as the person who is going to guide us and instruct us on how to pass the test. I don't know about you, but I don't want to repeat the same situations over and over, right? Uh, that's no fun. That's not what life is all about. And if we do fail the test, uh, when it comes to our character and comes to our development, um, we have to retake it. There's no getting out of it. We are going to learn some of these lessons uh, that come into our life that shape our character and mold who we are, and we are going to face them repeatedly. And so it would uh, encourage us to, um, to go to the one who has the answers and begin to listen allow my heart to be swayed by what he is saying inside of my life. And so I can begin to progress forward and begin to uh, make progress and to begin to pass these tests, right? The next one is the, uh, the idea of coaching. He is a father, not only that tutors, but he is a father that coaches. And uh, if you've been in any form of sports, uh, which I have uh, a couple different ones, you know, karate, uh, you know, uh, learning instruction by a sensei, and um, baseball, learning from my coach. What I do know about this process is that the coach's job is to really educate you and to drill in the fundamentals. And that's exactly what, um, what God's process looks like inside of our lives. He is there as the tutor, but he is also there as the coach to begin to educate us in the fundamentals. And if we are open to his sway and open to the communication, he, he is going to establish us strong in the fundamentals. And the reason why he's going to do that is so we begin to play the game of life and we begin to succeed inside of the game of life. And so we could stop going around these same problems over and over. So we could stop the, the negative uh, practices that we have found ourselves in. It's kind of like a golf swing. Think about this for a moment. Uh, practice does not make perfect. Practice makes permanent. Because if you continually practice the wrong way, you're going to continually be set in that detrimental system. It's kind of like a golf swing that um, if you practice a very negative swing and your stance is off and everything's off, you got all the fundamentals wrong, it doesn't matter how much you practice, how much repetition you do, you're going to always be wrong. And not only that, but you're going to set that wrong system in stone and you're going to continue to swing in that fashion. 
And this is what has happened in our life. We have these detrimental beliefs and these mindsets that we are stuck in. And we repeat these processes and patterns over and over again. And we think that we're, we're making progress, right? But the fact is, is that we're just getting thoroughly established in the negativity. And we need to stop and get our frame right to get our swing right and begin to get established inside of the fundamentals. And that is a powerful reality. The next role that the father plays is the uh, of education. And that is an educator is one who um, educates the one giving the process of education to another. And so God is our father, but he is also our tutor. He's also our coach. And he's also our educator. And life is a process of education. And that's not uh, up here. That's not inside of your mind. We think, uh, uh, we think always in terms of education as the intellect. But God has a form of heart education. If we allow ourselves to be open to him, the Bible says that we can write these things on the tablets of our heart. And that is that his, his word, his ways, his spirit begin to get etched in stone. And his, he, his prescription, his prescribes, right? That's what it means, a scribe was somebody who, who scribes something out. And so that is the role that he plays inside of our life. He is the scribe of our heart. And he is going to write on the tablets of our heart. And he's beginning to educate us in his ways and his paths. And this is definitely a, a heart education. Uh, the next one is the uh, identity of a trainer for God. And that is to ex uh, equip us with the skills, the knowledge, and experience to be successful. Now, when you think about this, you think of a trainer at a gym. And what, they're, what, are, what are they there to do? They're there to motivate you. They're there to push you. Uh, beyond your limits, beyond your scope, beyond your capabilities, and they're there to stretch you. They're there to uh, tear your muscles. Uh, sometimes, you know, cause you a lot of pain in this process of growth. Um, but there is no growth without pain. Uh, when I was young, I had a lot of growing pains, you know, inside of my legs, extremely painful. Uh, um, but there was no growing without those pains. And training inside of a gym teaches that. There is no growth and development without stretching and without pain. And so the reality is, is that God is our Father. He loves us. And He desires to stretch us. Now that stretching may seem painful for a moment. Stretching our mindset and our belief systems because we become so fixed in these nasty belief systems that are getting us terrible results. And we have to be stretched. And when we're confronted with new beliefs, what do we do? We get defensive because we think we have it all figured out. And if we get anything that sounds contrary to what we think we already know, we begin to defend it and we begin to push it away. And what it is, is we're not open to the truth of God. We're not open for the expansion of our hearts and our minds. And what begins to happen is we begin to stay in that stay, same state and that same condition because we are not willing to be stretched. If you want growth inside of er any area of your frame, your family, faith, fitness, and finances, you're going to have to be stretched in that area. And, you know, I face this challenge. You know, I'm like, God, you know, I want to make this certain amount of money so I can uh, begin to do... Uh, things that I want with ease. I could focus on uh, on the ministry and to do these things and, and I could be fully supported and not rely on the support of other people. And the reality is, is that if I'm going to have that mindset, I'm going to have to be stretched. My character is going to have to be stretched. My capabilities, my mindset, the way I look at things. Removing myself from the business so I'm not a, a key worker inside of there and overseeing it from a, a different perspective. All of these things are going to have to begin to happen and it's going to stretch me out. If we want the, the body that we want, you know, I've been uh, undergoing a process of transformation inside of my body for the last year. 
Uh, I've been feeling great. I have more energy than I've ever had. Uh, you know, I have eating things that I put on my life, supplements that I take, uh, things that I that I that I eat that are very healthy for me. Going through this process, I'm not where I want to be yet, but I see uh, step by step I'm establishing habits and behavior patterns that are going to get me to where I want, and not only that, that I'm going to be able to maintain them. But I'm stretching. I'm stretching my mindset before I started this video. I was literally stretching. But, you know, it's the stretching of your belief system. Your mind. If you want a great marriage, um, you're going to have to be stretched. You're going to have to allow the Spirit of God to come in and to be your tutor, to be your coach, uh, to be your educator, and to be your trainer. The reality is inside of a marriage that, uh, um, <laughs> you know, they say that there's no... Uh, manual, okay, um, but there is Emmanuel, and that is that there is a tutor out there. There is a coach. There is God. If we allow Him to come inside of our life, He's going to uh, communicate to us what we can do to have an awesome marriage. Now, in all of these things, we have to uh, yield to the process. The next one is nurturer. And that is the person who is responsible to supply nourishment. You know, if we come to God on a daily fashion and we say, feed me, speak to me, I can guarantee you that God is going to get, begin to take you up on that offer. You know, there's not many men out there that are saying, you know, in that humble fashion, God, I want you to communicate to me. And not only that, but I want to begin to apply and begin to carry out what you do speak to me. And there's not many men out there that really have that mindset. The next one is instructor. Um, and that is somebody who is going to instruct you in the path and in the operation. And the last one is uh, correction. This is the one that we need to thoroughly understand here. And that is that God wants to bring us into conformity to a standard. And we are going to um, continue on this even more because uh, I'm noticing that I can't even cover the content. Um, so tomorrow, we're going to go into uh, thoroughly into this idea of correction and what it means. But for today, I want you to open yourself up and thoroughly uh, accept and that you want to be the kind of person that knows instruction that you want to be intimately acquainted with God as your instructor. And if we want to thrive inside of life, we want to live this abundant life, we want to have the recovery life that is going to bring joy and cause happiness instead of frustration, depression, and defeat, and all of these things, that is going to come through being intimately acquainted with God as Father, God as the tutor, God as the instructor, and God as your coach. So, look at the areas of your life and say, where am I not allowing God to be my coach? Where am I not allowing God to be my trainer and stretch me so I can begin to grow in the fashion that He wants me to grow? Where is that taking place? All right, brothers, I will see you tomorrow. Peace.